Welcome to HTML5 webinar series from jpassion.com. Uh, today's topic is WebSocket. So let's start with the presentation. So we will see what is and why you want to use WebSocket. And we will look into WebSocket protocol and we'll see how you can write client side of the program of WebSocket. And we will see some server side implementation, uh, especially from Node.js. And uh, then we will talk about some of the higher level protocols. Uh, in this case, uh, pop sub, uh, actually point to point uh, messaging using ActiveMQ. So what is and why WebSocket? So if you see the characteristics of modern web applications, they are more and more collaborative, meaning uh, participants uh, access, uh, many participants are accessing the same application at the same time and they collaborate. And they collaborate by participating. In fact, they content, they create content you know, Facebook and uh, the, uh, the uh, Twitter, uh, they are examples of modern web applications where participants are, in fact, the content creators. And uh, they are real time, so contents are published and distributed real time. And multi-device and mobile friendly. So applications are accessed, accessed through many different types of clients, uh, desktop browser, tablet, mobile phones, and TVs. So modern web application examples include online gaming, distance learning, collaborative authoring, auctions, and things like that. So requirements of these modern web applications demand uh, include uh, the features of reliable communication, real-time and event-driven communication and bi-directional communication and with a minimal uh, latency and minimal overhead. Now, what we have on the web at the moment before WebSocket is HTTP. Now, the problems of HTTP, HTTP include is only half duplex, so you cannot have uh, messages being transferred at the same time. So it's always one direction at a time. And it has high overhead because even if you're sending only a few bytes, the header structure contains hundreds of uh, the uh, data, hundreds of, not data, hundreds of the uh, information that needs to be passed along with every single HTTP request and response. And in most cases, you do not need to pass those header data. So header data is becoming a high overhead. And it is slow because uh, this I, you know, because of this higher overhead. And now, uh, you know, because of these limitations, uh, we've been actually hacking uh, the to allow server side event driven real time communication, and that's called, for example, like a comet. So this comet is a hack. In fact, it provide you know it provides these real time like features. But uh, the, because it's based on HTTP, it's a lot of complex hacks you need to do. So the complex hacks that we are talking about include, uh, you know, mostly long polling. So long polling is basically using two connections, and uh, it adds complexity to both client and server to simulate this real-time kind of com you know, communication. Or you have to actually do polling from the client to the server. So basically, client has to you know poll the other server uh, to see whether there is any interesting data to receive. So both schemes are not good enough for modern web, modern web applications. So that's the reason we need new scheme, and that is basically WebSocket. Okay. So WebSocket. So we'll actually go. Yes. Yeah, so let's actually talk about the uh, some of the examples that you can see in WebSocket. Okay, so let's go over here and uh, let's go to exercise one. So we're going to actually take a look at a few demos from a company called the Kazin, and they have a few sample application. One of the sample application is stock portfolio. So if you click this link and you can see 
uh, the uh, stock information is being dis distributed real time to all the clients. Okay, and client can actually buy and sell. Okay, now you can have this uh, the uh, data to be distributed, and the clients could actually perform this buy and sell, and it could be actually many many thousands of clients all over the world. So I'm gonna just simulate another client by opening another browser. Okay, and uh, I'm going to just copy here. And uh, these two clients could be actually, you know, located thousand miles away. Okay, or you could have, in fact, uh, several thousands of clients talking to the server. And you can see they are actually receiving the same information. And this client can actually perform buy and sell. Okay. Uh, the uh, and whatever the uh, the uh, the buy and sell a particular client is performing is going to be reflected to all the other clients. Okay, so this is an example of the uh, the uh, um, uh, the website application. Okay, so let's actually go to another example. So the um, Another example is chatting. You know, chatting is again the uh, the simplest, uh, one of the simple uh, the uh, this uh, modern web application uh, where you need the real time communication. So whenever someone join, you want to actually see that uh, right away. Whenever someone posts a message, you know, you want to see that posted message uh, to be distributed to you know whoever expect, whoever is participating in the chatting. And again, there could be thousands or tens of thousands of clients actually participating in the chatting. So let's actually go to this chatting application that you can run right now. So you can actually go over here, okay? So, you know, feel free to join this, uh, web, you know, so I'm gonna actually join with my own name, Sanction, and you can see I'm joined, you know, I'm joined, and I actually receive a color called this green, and first message. Okay, so I can see my post message is actually being displayed here, and I can see all the messages being, uh, they actually being posted by other people as well. So I can actually simulate myself again go to this link uh, to from another client okay so I'm gonna actually simulate myself as another client okay So here uh, rest sucks 99. okay so I received this blue color and then I can uh, you know hello. 99 or something like that you can see all the clients now receive the message from another client okay all right so this is another example that you can actually play around okay so again on the back end is using the you know it back end is using node.js in fact we're going to actually build this application uh, later on in our lab exercise okay so that is exercise one just kind of to see how things work okay all right so let's get back to presentation so what is and why WebSocket? So Web, WebSocket provides a full duplex bi-directional communication channel over a single socket. So both client and server can send the data at the same time. And it has very low overhead. Okay? So small message such as 126 bytes and below, uh, the, uh, the actual overhead is, overhead is just two bytes. Okay? So data is sent without the overhead of HTTP headers. And it works with the firewalls and proxies because it's actually based on a, you know, it's actually using HTTP uh, in the beginning. Uh, so it's HTTP compatible handshake. And uh, you can also actually use HTTP cookies for authentication. Okay. Uh, so that's the typical way that we perform authentication uh, in our web application. And you can use the same thing. Okay. Uh, it, so it replaces the comet. Okay, so again, as I said before, Comet is a hack, you know, that actually kind of trying to achieve the similar uh, real-time communication uh, for modern web application. And it's cross-domain capable uh, through cores, and we're going to actually talk about this one later on in a bit more detail. Actually, no, nah. <laughs> yeah, we have, yeah, we're going to actually cover cores, cross-domain things in cross-site, cross, site cross uh, the, the uh, cross-site uh, messaging uh, next week, okay? So not today. All right. So WinSocket support. If you actually go to caniuse.com, so if you go to caniuse.com, use.com, and uh, type WebSocket. 
So you can see uh, the Firefox and Chrome uh, and other browsers, modern, you know, modern browsers, uh, IE10 and uh, Safari 6.0, they all support the, uh, web, the web socket, except actually Android <laughs> browser. Okay. And uh, right now, the support level is about 63, you know, it's about 64%. Okay, so let's move on to WebSocket protocol. So, uh, so WebSocket connections gets established by upgrading from HTTP to WebSocket protocol. So it's using the same TCP connection. And uh, so you are going to actually use WS and WSS. So this is for secure using SSL, okay. So it does, it does use, it does actually have a very minimum, uh, the, uh, it has a minimum overhead. So each message, and sometimes, uh, so this message is called the frame that contains the data, is using only two bytes overhead for messages whose length is 126 bytes or under. So if it is over 126, then it will use another one or two bytes, okay? So it's a lot less, uh, it's using a lot less, uh, the, uh, the, uh, um, the uh, bytes for you know the uh, for system level uh, information. Uh, no latency in establishing new TCP connections for each HTTP message. So actually, it's you know a lot less latency. I would say it's not no latency. Okay, so it's reducing from HTTP. We are talking about 150 milliseconds. Uh, in the web socket, we are talking about one third of it. And there is no polling overhead. So if you're using polling, meaning if the client is polling. Uh, the uh, if there is no interesting message from the server, that uh, communication, the question response is actually being wasted, right? But uh, in a WebSocket, you know, the messages will be sent back and forth only when they have interesting data. All right, so this is a handshake. So, you know, when the client is talking to the server for the first time, it actually asks the server whether the server can actually upgrade to WebSocket, okay? So this is HTTP header, and it contains connection upgrade field, okay? So this is basically asking the server whether the server can actually handle a WebSocket, okay? And if the server can handle a WebSocket, then it will send back connection upgrade. So after that, it's going to use a WebSocket channel. In terms of data, once a WebSocket channel is established, then both client and server can send data at the same time uh, by using this data frame. So this data frame is constructed like this. So the first byte, first byte uh, is called the upcode, and the first bit is uh, indicating is used to indicate if this fragment is a final fragment or not. Okay, so if you're sending small messages, uh, then this is always you know set to one. And then the four bits, last four bits of this, the first byte uh, contains upcode. So it does indicate whether data is text, uh, if it is the, and then whether it is a binary data, or if this is a close uh, request. Or it does, you know, whether it is a ping or pong. So ping and pong I actually use to, 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 uh, to see whether the uh, WebSocket uh, channel is still uh, alive or not. Okay. Uh, is masked a bit indi in indicates whether this uh, frame is masked or not. So this mask, I mean, this is actually basically, you know, for sec this mask is actually added for security reason, uh, you know. But uh, we're not going to talk about uh, in detail on this mask. Okay, so this is mask is indicating whether this mask bit is uh, is actually mask bytes are in fact included or not. All right, so let's do this handshake exercise two. So what we're going to do is we are going to go this uh, website called the websocket.org. It does have uh, the websocket server application which just responds to your request. So you can connect it and then you can send messages. And then what we're going to actually see the handshake. Okay. So if you're using Chrome, uh, you can actually use in Chrome developer tools to capture uh, the uh, the traffic. Okay. So basically, you know, when we connect, uh, we can actually see uh, this HTTP message is actually being exchanged. Okay. So you can see this HTTP message. This is HTTP message. You can see connect request, connect upgrade, and then response says, uh, you know, the connection upgrade. So after this, uh, the connection uh, has been established. 
and then you are going to send you can actually send a message so here you send the message and this response uh the the server this echo server it just responds back okay so you know and then you can take a look at the actual uh the uh, frame okay by selecting web sockets and if you click frames you can see the message is being exchanged okay and then you can disconnect so if you click disconnect uh you can see uh, you know, the, this handshake. This handshake is happening at the uh, web connection level. That's the reason it's using opcode 8. Okay, as I said before, you know, the, 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 the last four bits of the first byte is used for opcode, and opcode 8 is actually indicating uh, close. Okay, so let's try this. So I'm going to actually go to uh, this website. Okay, and, uh, you know, I'm going to just, uh, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to open uh, this. So I'm going to connect. So it's connected. So I'm going to just take a look at the HTTP request. So you can see HTTP request indicating that uh, the connection upgrade and uh, the server says connection is upgraded. OK, uh, so the uh, the uh, uh, you can see status code 101. So if the server can handle the WebSocket request, then it should send back this 101 response mess response code, which is basically WebSocket protocol handshake. Okay. All right. So now, so now at the moment, the WebSocket has been established. Now we're going to actually send some messages to the server. So here, hello from Boston. So it's being responded from the server. Now, hello from uh, New York. All right, so you know we send this message and uh, then the server responded back. Okay, so now let's take a look at the frames. Okay, I have to click this one. Okay, so you can see the messages. This is a message that the client actually sent to the server, and this is a message that was sent back to the uh, the uh, the uh, from the server. And this is the message I sent, a client sent. This is a message that was sent back from the server. Okay, now if I disconnect. Okay, so again the uh, if I connect disconnect. Okay. Now, if I click this one, and then the uh, disconnect handshake happens on the WebSocket level, it's actually sending the uh, uh, upcode 8, and then it's sent back. So you can actually capture this traffic using uh, Wireshark, uh, which is actually a sniffer tool. It's open source sniffer tool. Uh, the, uh, I don't have a documentation for that. I'm going to actually add it sometime later, uh, but uh, you can actually capture that traffic. All right, so let's move on to the next. All right, so let's take a look at what JavaScript API that you can use to do uh, write, uh, to write the uh, client application using WebSocket. It's very simple. So you specify, you're going to actually use uh, WebSocket. Uh, you're going to create the WebSocket object uh, by using WebSocket here. And then you specify the URL of the uh, WebSocket destination, so the server. So once you got the uh, WebSocket object, then uh, then you can actually associate event handler. But before we move on to that event handler association, let's see other options that you can specify when you're creating an option, a uh, WebSocket. So this is an example for creating a WebSocket with optional high-level protocol. So if you think about the, uh, you know, TCP connection, you write a lot of other, you know, protocol like FTP and uh, FSMTP. Those are high-level protocols, right? So same thing can happen on WebSocket. Okay, so you know the uh, the uh, so I should actually say TCP socket. On the top of TCP socket, you can actually build a lot of higher level protocols such as FTP and SMTP and the Telnet and things like that. Now you can do the same thing for web socket. Okay, so you could actually have uh, what is called a stump. Okay, so you know we're gonna actually talk about the stump. This is the uh, messaging higher level protocol. You can have your own protocol, like uh, my protocol. So in this case, what I'm saying is that I'm talking to the server, indicating I want to create the WebSocket channel, WebSocket uh, the object. But these are the two protocols that I can support. So you know, the server, when it receives these two protocols, and the client, the, the server will actually determine which protocol it wants to support. Okay. All right. So you can certainly certainly specify a single or multiple uh, high-level protocols that you want to you want to use on the top of uh, WebSocket. Uh, for you know the WebSocket with the SSL, 